So Tesla just showed off its new Cybertruck to the world. And just like I said in my truck prediction video, it's definitely going to get a lot of attention for good and for bad. Let's take a look at those specs and features and see how they stack up against the competition. And let's talk about those, um, those looks. I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. Before I get into it, I wanted to mention that I'm going to be at the Fully Charged Live event this February in Austin, Texas. More details to come, but if you have any interest in attending, I have details in the description on how to get discounted tickets. I hope to see some of you there, and be sure to say hi if you see me. I'm sure a lot of you watched the live stream event just like I did. I'm sure a lot of you have some pretty strong opinions on the looks of the truck and how the event went off, but I want to put all of that to the side just for a minute, because I think it's important to put the aesthetics and the showmanship to the sides so that we can take an objective look at the features, the specs, and the price to see how it compares against the competition. But <laughs> I will get to the looks and the event after all of that, as well as my unscientific Twitter poll that I put out there asking who was interested in buying it before and after the event went off. To kick things off, let's take a look at the specs of the best-selling truck on the market, the Ford F-150. There's more trim variations than Tesla's offering, so let's just look at the top and the low end of the range to get a sense of where everything falls. From the 2019 spec sheet, on the low end, we're looking at a price of $28,000 with a payload of 1,990 pounds or 902 kilograms, a towing capacity of 7,700 pounds or 3,492 kilograms, and 20 to 22 miles per gallon combined, depending if you're looking at the 4x2 or the 4x4. On the high end, you're looking at a price of around $67,000, for a payload of 3,230 pounds or 1,464 kilograms, a towing capacity of 13,200 pounds or 5,987 kilograms, and 21 to 19 miles per gallon, depending if you're looking at the 4x2 or the 4x4. And depending on what variant you buy, you can get truck beds from five and a half feet to eight feet. All of the trucks are made from aluminum alloy on top of a steel frame. I think that does a pretty good job of setting the table and giving context to what Tesla just announced with the Cybertruck. From Ryan McCaffrey's Ride the Lightning interview, we know that Elon was targeting $49,000 or less. You know, I think it's got to start at less than $50,000. It's got to be like $49,000 starting yeah. price max, uh, you know, as, 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 and ideally less. Um, you know, even I think he just made a lot of people really happy who are interested in the truck by saying that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it just can't be unaffordable. You know, it's just got to be, it's got to be something that's, that's affordable. So, um, now there'll be versions of the car that are more expensive, but, or the truck that are more expensive, but the, the, you've got to be able to get a, a really great truck for $49,000 or less. We also knew that it would have at least a dual motor design and as well as some crazy specs to compete with the F-150. What we got on price though shocked me. And it's probably the most impressive part of the announcement overall. And but it's gonna... For the three variants, they all share the same payload of 3,500 pounds or about 1,587 kilograms. The single motor price is 39,900 with a towing capacity of 7,500 pounds or 3,400 kilograms in a range of 250 miles or 402 kilometers. The dual motor comes in at $49,900 with a towing capacity of 10,000 pounds or 4,500 kilograms in a range of 300 miles or 482 kilometers. And the tri-motor all-wheel drive comes in at $69,900 with a towing capacity of 14,000 pounds or 6,350 kilograms and a range of 500 miles plus or 804 kilometers. When he announced the starting price, I actually yelled something out that I can't repeat on video. I'm really impressed and shocked that they were able to come in $10,000 less than what was expected. And the towing and the truck bed capabilities are very competitive with the F-150. The low-end models differ in price by about $10,000, but the high-end models only differ by less than $3,000. As we all know, electric vehicles are much cheaper to operate and maintain. With the very low miles per gallon that we see in trucks like the F-150, it's not hard to see how much potential savings there is between charging your truck versus filling your fuel tank with gas. With the yearly maintenance savings, Tesla's trucks should be cheaper to own and use than a comparable F-150. But there was something that really caught my eye from the live stream. 
So obviously, we'll have access to all the superchargers. Uh, be capable of uh, more than 250 kilowatts. We'll reveal the actual number later. Tesla hasn't provided any specs on the battery kilowatt capacities for the Cybertruck. And with the comment that we'll actually be revealing more about that later, it's clear that there's some bigger news there. My guess is that it's related to the battery pack itself, and Tesla has a battery and powertrain event planned for early next year, where they're expected to announce some major advancements in their battery technology. That event is shaping up to be a potential bombshell of news. I'm anticipating that we'll be finding out how the Maxwell Technologies acquisition will be paying off for the company, as well as finding out what advancements Jeff Don and his team have been working on at Dalhousie University. Longer lasting, more resilient, and cheaper battery packs are the key to EVs reaching price parity with gasoline cars. Hitting $100 per kilowatt hour in a battery is considered the turning point, and we may see companies like Tesla passing that point soon. But where the Cybertruck really starts to pull away from the F-150 on specs is the body construction in glass. Instead of using a body on frame construction like most pickup trucks do, they've opted for the exoskeleton or unibody design. That type of design is more rigid and gives a lot of other benefits like reducing weight, reducing cost of materials, and maximizing space. And Tesla is taking advantage of those optimizations to use a heavier material like their cold rolled stainless steel, which was designed for use on the SpaceX Starship with an obvious advantage over aluminum. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah. And much like Sean Mitchell predicted, and I was thinking along the same lines, the glass is Tesla's armor glass. But this is where the onstage demo took a really weird and unfortunate turn. I'm not sure why they felt the need to throw a metal ball at the truck after the magic show-like demo that they put on with the bearings being dropped on the panes of glass. As I expected after seeing that last night, most of the news coverage is about the broken glass and not the truck itself. Putting that aside for the moment, the armor glass should be much more durable than the standard glass. Transparent aluminum is a real thing and is being used in bulletproof glass. So Tesla's armor glass should prove to be beneficial for both the Cybertruck and the Semi. It's just a shame that the demo played out like it did. And finally, the onboard outlets and air compressor give the Cybertruck a utility that no other truck in the market can match. Add to that the adaptive air suspension system that automatically adapts to what you're carrying and doing as well as the insane amount of storage available in the frunk, the cabin, and even a small area under the truck bed. Not to mention the speed this is capable of, which is better than a lot of sports cars that are out there. How many trucks do you know that can go from zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds? Elon lived up to his promises there. Okay, like I promised, we're circling back to the look of the truck and some of the design details. And to quote myself from my truck prediction video, no matter what, it sounds like this truck is most likely going to be divisive for looks, which got me wondering, who is this truck for? Regardless of who the intended audience is for the Tesla pickup truck, it's definitely going to get a lot of attention when it's announced shortly. Yep, I mean, just look at it. This is a truck you're either gonna love or hate. There's no middle ground with this one. It looks like something that drove off a science fiction movie set and not something that you'd see coming to market from a car company. And that's kind of why I love it. I'm a UI designer and have been doing UI, UX, graphic design, and art my entire life. I look at this and see something that came from a place of passion, something that really resonated with Elon and Franz and the rest of the Tesla team. It's bold, it's out there, and for that, I love it. It's great to have someone pushing the boundaries and trying to rethink what a truck can be. The opening presentation illustrated that really well, running through almost 100 years of truck design. It's pretty much been unchanged, and that could be why a lot of people aren't resonating with this design. The reason I wanted to put off my thoughts on the design of the truck until after I talked about the specs and competition was because of how divisive this design is. It's easy to look at it, say it's ugly, and then just write off the truck completely. But when you look at what functionality this truck is bringing to the table and how well it stacks up against the competition, you can't just write it off. I got texts and messages from friends and viewers that have fallen into the two camps, I love it and I want one, or it's so ugly there's no way. Well, I fall into the I love it bucket. As soon as it drove onto stage, my first two thoughts were about the DeLorean from Back to the Future and the Lotus from the James Bond film The Spy Who Loved Me. 
Both were movies that left an impression on me as a kid, and it made me so happy to see that The Lotus was an inspiration when Elon tweeted about that a few hours after the event. And I mean, just look at how the truck bed cover works. That's so clever. But how are people reacting to it? Well, I did a very unscientific Twitter poll before and after the event to try to gauge everyone's snap judgment. Before the event, I asked, who's planning on getting the Tesla Cybertruck sight unseen? 20% said yes, 48% said waiting to see it, and 32% no, don't want a truck. I took that snapshot right as the event started, and then after the event, I asked which people actually wanted one. 49% said yes, 29% said nope, and 22% said they don't want a truck. It's interesting that roughly half of the people were waiting to see the event first, and even though it's different people that took the survey before and after, roughly 20% of the waiting folks went over to a yes. And in the end, we're looking at roughly half of people are interested versus not interested. Cars like the DeLorean and trucks like Bollinger are very opinionated designs. So there should still be a good number of people who will wanna jump in and buy the Cybertruck. But even after the event, I'm still not sure who it's actually for. It's not clear to me if the truck will win over Ford, Dodge, or GM truck buyers, or if it's going to pull in more non-truck people, people like myself or Tesla fans, and I haven't even touched on the EV truck competition like Rivian, which is targeted at a higher end market, so it's not completely apples to apples. The highest priced Cybertruck is about the same price as the lowest priced Rivian. And I can't wait to see how this unfolds over the next couple of years, and I still have a lot of thoughts that are still taking shape because this is still very fresh. And if there was one area of the event I was disappointed in, aside from the broken glass, it was the lack of details. We don't know the battery specs. We don't know how towing capacity will affect the range. We don't have any details around safety. And with that steel body, what's gonna happen to cars that it hits in an accident? And what's going to happen to it? I mean, are there any crumple zones? And as much as I love that they did a one more thing and revealed the Tesla ATV, why didn't they provide any details on that? So many open questions, but I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more details unfold in the coming months. There's a lot to look forward to with this one. Now I'm really curious, what do you think? Sound off in the comments about which camp you fall into. Are you a love it or a hate it person? And if you're a hate it person, are the looks so bad that you'd never consider buying one? And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends because it really does help support the channel. And check out the links in my description for some fun Tesla inspired t-shirts and some great gear and discounts. And as always, an extra big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Your support is really helping to make these videos possible. Be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew. If you haven't already done so, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.